Thank you very much for having me here. Uh, but you know, uh, three people went for hunting. Uh, a lawyer and a doctor and a Christian preacher. And suddenly they, they find a lion coming in front of them. So the three of them shot at the same time. And uh, the lion went dead. So they went, the three of them, to see what happened. And they found that just one bullet uh, catches the lion. And they were fighting between each other. Who was the right one? So what do you think? The lawyer or the doctor or the Christian, Christian preacher? Who was the right one? Got the line. Just guess. The lawyer. Any other guessing, suggestion? The doctor. I think the Christian preacher. Do you have a reason why the lawyer? Or the doctor? I have a reason why the Christian preacher. The doctor would know where the harm is. Okay. The lawyer is used to shoot you from the The Christian preacher because the bullet went from this ear and come out from the other ear. So I'm not coming to you as a Christian preacher. Just concentrate on what the Lord, the Lord wants to say to us today. And uh, I will read. Uh, <clears throat> actually, I was preparing a completely different preaching for today. And uh, the Lord led me last night to share with you this text. I don't know. It might apply. It's applied to my life clearly and strongly. And I believe it might apply to your life as well. Second Kings chapter 13. Starting from verse 14. Elijah had been suffering from the illness from which he died. Joash, king of Israel, went down to see him and wept over him. My father, my father, he cried. The charots and the horsemen of Israel. Elijah said, Get a bow and some arrows. And he did so. Take the bow in your hands, he said, and the king of Israel. He said to the king of Israel, when he had taken it, Elijah put his hands on, king, uh, on the king's hands. Open the east window, he said. And he opened it. Shoot, Elijah said. And he shot. The Lord's arrow of victory, the arrows of victory over Aram, Elijah declared, you will completely destroy the Arameans uh, at Aphek. Then he said, take the arrows. And the king took them. Elijah told him, strike the ground. He struck it three times and stopped. The man of God was angry with him and said, you should have struck the ground five or six times. Then you would have defeated Aram and completely destroyed it. But now you will defeat it only three times. Actually, it was uh, an end of uh, prophetic generation. As 
Elijah was dying, and he died after that. The second, second verse, the following verse, saying he, the prophet died. And after that, was nobody else to continue because he, could, he followed Elijah. And his, his boy couldn't continue, couldn't catch the vision of prophecy. And he just went to uh, get as much benefit as more possible from the world around. And he tried to take money and gifts. So that was an end of generation of prophecies. And that was the last prophecy given to the land. And you know, Aphek is a town in Syria, and it's up to now the same town. And this Aphek area is the only area usually the people of God leave it and not take it and leave some of the enemies in Aphek. So that's why the prophecies was saying to destroy Aphek completely and was trying to lead the king to the way how can how can he get the this small town, how he, can he win it for the rest of the life, for the rest of the history? But unfortunately, he couldn't get it. And up till today, it's the most idol worship area in the Middle East, in the Middle East is Aphek. Up till today. And I can see this as... Uh, because I believe the prophecies in the Old Testament and in the New Testament is not only applying on their time, but applying to our life in different generations and in, in different meanings. Though this prophecy is clearly talking about a window of opportunity, saying about a window of opportunity might be in your own life, might be in your own home, in your own family, might be in your, in your church, a window of opportunity. And the window is not open all the time. Usually the window open depends on the season. We are here in England in a cold weather. So usually you're not open, you are not open the windows while it is very cold outside. You will not leave them open. So the window has to be open little while to just give fresh air to the room or can be open in a season of summer, of hot weather. So the window is just open for a little while. And that's why the prophet said to the king, open the window. And there is a window of opportunity. And that's what I feel the, the, the Lord wants to say to you uh, today. That the bow he talked about, if you can just leave the text on the screen, uh, the bow is the power of the Holy Spirit in your own life. And you know, to just shoot the, uh, the arrow, you need to take the bow as stretch as possible. When you stretch it, as much as you stretch it, you can throw the arrow as far as possible. Or you can throw the arrow to the target. And the, the work of the Holy Spirit needs to be stretched as much as possible in your own life. And the arrow can apply to the word, the specific word, the personal word from God to you, the rima. You know the difference between rima and logos. There's two Greek words about the word of God. The logos is the general word. When the Bible says any promise, generally to anybody, 
to the whole church. But when it say something specific, personal to someone, that's called Rima. Like when Jesus asked Peter to walk over the water, and he said to him to jump from the boat, that is a Rima. No one of us can now go and say, okay, I got this promise from the Lord, and I will walk to France. You will die, because that's a, a Rima to Peter. And actually, I feel uh, the arrow is like the, the, the specific word, the personal word from the Lord to your life. The Rima to you. It's like an arrow. The word of God is like an arrow. And you have to put your hand upon the pow, which means your responsibility to allow the promise of God to be fulfilled in your own, your, your life. It's your responsibility to allow God's hand to move upon your life. It's your responsibility for the word of God, the arrow, so your hands has to go for it. And then the prophet's hands was representing the hand of God. So the hand of God has to come upon your hands, and then we can use the bow and arrow to shoot. Shooting means obedience. That's my understanding. Obedience. When the prophet said to the king, open the window and ask him to shoot. Shooting to where? Shooting to the window of opportunity. This is your opportunity now. Just shoot. Logically, if I am in the position of this king, I will say to him, where is the goal? You want me to shoot? Shooting to what? Where is the goal? But he had to obey and shoot. Shoot for the new opportunity. He asked him to open the window to where? To the east. And the east means a new day. The east means a new season. The east means a brand new thing for your life. I can see people here, the Lord inviting you to a new season. Inviting you to a brand new understanding for the Word of God. Brand new understanding for this season you are coming to today with a new opportunity. A new opportunity. Then the Lord said the victory twice. said about the arrow of victory and the arrow of deliverance. The arrow of victory is a freedom and the arrow of deliverance from Aram, from Syria. Deliverance from Aram Aram means slavery, means idols, destroying idols, deliverance from the power of Satan, deliverance from the power of enemy, deliverance from the sin you still cannot be free from, 
while you're praying for years and years and say, Lord, I don't want to be under this bondage anymore, under this supervision to my life. Deliverance, the arrow, which means the promise, which means the rema, the specific word to your life. After that, the prophet asked ask the king to take the rest of arrows. First time he said to him, shoot. This time he said to him, strike. You know the difference between shoot and strike? Shoot, that's shoot to something far. Strike here. Strike the land just close to you. Strike it. When the Rima apply to your life, When you receive the new opportunity and new season to your life. The Lord will bring the enemy close to you and say to you, your ground, your own land has to be striked first. And you have to kill all the power of the enemies around you first. So strike the ground. And one, what, what the, the king did, he struck the land three times and then gave up, stopped. Strike with arrows, we said the arrow is the word of God. And strike the ground, we said the ground is your own life. So he said to him to strike his own life by the word of God, apply the word of God to your own life. Before you shoot it to the goal, you need to apply it first to your own land, to your own ground. So he asked him to apply it. And he applied three times and found it difficult. And the man of God became angry. Start to rebuke the, the king. Said to him, if you strike five or six times, you could destroy Aphek, Aram, to the, to the end. You could complete it. But because he didn't, you will strike or you win three times only. What you will say about your life will happen. What you believe about yourself, you will gain. You will not get more than you trust. If you say, I will win three times, you will win three times. And stop. If you continue what happened, you will know that Jewish striked three times and beat it around just three times. And that's why we still have AFIC up till today. It is clear for me that the Lord giving the church today a window of opportunity. Not only this church, but giving the church in the Middle East while they are under persecution and the Islamic regime came in to our countries there there is a word of opportunity there is a wind of opportunity for the church in the Middle East you might not get what I am saying because you are not from there but I visited Egypt since January 2011, the starting of evolution in Egypt, what they call it evolution, I visited, I visited Egypt seven times. And the last one was two weeks ago. 
And you know, just yesterday, in one of the main squares in Cairo, they were fighting between the army and the uh, the secular people. And some of them fighting as fighting for Islam. But during that time, the world of opportunity is widely open for the church. Do you know what? It's not only persecution, but the church is growing rapidly in the Middle East. Muslims are coming to Christ by huge number every day in the Middle East. The true Islam is rising their flag. And all the people understand now and sh- see clearly they voted for Islam and they found what's happening from Islam. And a a big wind of opportunity. On the 11th of 11th, 2011, was a a special night in Egypt. And uh, by God's grace, I was there. That night, they gathered to pray for Egypt, the whole churches, in a mountain. And I was, you know, expecting something like, Four or five thousand will gather there. But do you know how many gathered at that night? Seventy thousand people. They prayed from six evening to six morning. They had a night of prayer. Seventy thousand people. And around three o'clock in the morning, while the Coptic priest was leading some worship time, it was an amazing time. And you know, the whole leaders were from the Coptic Orthodox Church because the Pope of the Coptic Orthodox Church at that time didn't allow evangelicals to do it. So praise the Lord that the Coptic Orthodox, what they call traditional church, did it. At three o'clock in the night, the crowd started to shout, Jesus, in Arabic. Jesus. Jesus. Do you know for how long? For 17 minutes. Non-stop. And the presence of the Lord were amazing. I didn't experience in my life anything like that. I can bring you like a small video about this. I will send it to Dad. But do you know? The window of opportunity for the Middle East is there. I heard a taxi the, the night before on the 10th of November. I wasn't driving. <laughs> and uh, the taxi driver called Ahmed. And Ahmed is a very clear Muslim name. So I said to him, Ahmed, where are you from? And he said to me about the town. The town is the same mountain we were to do the prayer on the 11th. So he said, I'm, I'm from Muqattam. I said, oh, great. Do you know that Christians will meet tomorrow to pray for Egypt? He said, yes, I know, I will be there. I said, what? You will be there, you are Ahmed. He said, ah, I'm a Christian 10 years ago. And I didn't tell anybody because I'm afraid. But I'm attending most of churches. And he started to name for me different churches he's attending most of the weeks. It's not only Ahmed, but people, many people coming to Christ. A wind of opportunity. Sadly, the church is declining in the UK. But I believe the Christian faith is rising in the UK. And there is a wind of opportunity to reach the secular people, Muslims coming to the UK, to reach the nation. This nation where for years and years and years, A missionary land, sending missions to everywhere. And now this land waiting to receive missions, not from outside, but from inside. The window of opportunity is open. I know this clearly for you personally in your own life, that the window of opportunity is open. 
and just the Lord wants, wants you to shoot. And before he's asking you to shoot, he's asking you today to strike the land, to strike the, your own ground. And as much as you strike the own, your own ground, as much as you applied the promises of the Lord in your own life, as much as you receive rima to your life, you will be prepared to shoot when the wind of opportunity come. The last thing I will say, that the wind of opportunity has its timing. This window will open for a specific time. Don't be late to shoot. Don't be late. As well, don't do it earlier. Receive the promise first. You have to do it exactly at its time. At its period of life. Not before and not after. A lot of us shoot it before and lost the goal. And a lot of us wait a lot and do nothing. One of the things I don't like in, the, in England is the polit- politically correct phrase. I cannot speak to anybody because I need not to interfere their freedom. They might not receive it. But the command is to go to all nations and preach the gospel at any time, at every time, with all possibilities. But before we do this, to get the wind, the, 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 the wind of opportunity, we need to be prepared to answer every one question. So strike the land, strike your own ground, with the word of God to win it all. I believe Aphek has to be destroyed in your own life. Aphek has to be destroyed in the church life. Aphek has to be destroyed in England, in London. And that will not happen except through striking our ground every day and not give up. Not disappoint. Not, not be disappointed when you feel like you strike first time. Sometimes when we come and repent once, twice, three times and say, ah, I cannot get rid of this. Strike it again, 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 again. Till you win it. May the Lord bless you. Thank you very much, Waggy. It always amazes me when uh, God enlightens a familiar story, just how much new and fresh truth. I, I mean, I'm thinking, I know this story, but the things that I've just heard uh, coming out of that, the application, and uh, I'm sure that you with me will think, yes, I'm hearing God. So let's just take a moment. Richard's going to come and we're going to worship and and, uh, spend some time in in turning this back to God. But just as we do, um, let's just take a moment. I think it's good that we take the word seriously and... Just reflect for a second in the presence of God. Let's just pray together. Lord, we, we just want to be open to you, Holy Spirit of God. 
to just hear the ground that you want us to strike in our own lives. We're excited, Lord, about the confirmation of new season, but we're hearing clearly about striking the ground first, about this dealing with this aphek, about completing all that you purpose, about not stopping after the three. <clears throat> and Lord, just as we, as we are before you in worship and opening our hearts to you, we do invite you to move amongst us and to confirm your word with signs following. And we have specific signs that we're asking you, particularly, Lord, that you would show us this ground that's to be struck for us personally, for us together, and that you would enlighten to us <clears throat> your timing in this window of opportunity and grant us understanding in these days of this arrow, Lord, that we might work with you, that we may, may indeed be your servants, for well, that would be our privilege. So come, Lord, search our hearts, apply your word. We open ourselves to you even as we come to express our love to you at this time. We thank you for your word. Amen.